is 5 degrees right now and this weather is not okay. Hi guys, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm actually going to be doing a review for you guys on a new adult series that I finished sometime last year. I know I did say that I was going to be coming out with some travel videos for you guys this week, but it's actually taking a lot longer than what I expected to sort of cut and paste and put together. So hopefully that will be coming out very soon. Otherwise, I shall get straight into this video. So today I'm going to be reviewing 10 Tiny Breaths by Kei Takada, the series. Um, so the first book is 10 Tiny Breaths. The second book is One Tiny Lie. The third book is Four Seconds to Lose. And the fourth book is Five Ways to Fall. This is actually the only um, new adult series that I've actually finished. I don't tend to read a lot, read a lot of new adult um, novels because I don't find that they offer me a lot. Um, there isn't a lot of substance in this. Like, no... <laughs> That's just my personal opinion. Um, I'm sorry if I've offended anybody. But I actually thoroughly enjoyed this series and I found that it had a lot of depth to it. And I just wanted to do a series review just to sort of show you guys what I liked and disliked about it. But also recommend it to you guys to read. So the first book revolves around two characters, Casey and Trent. And Casey and her sister Livy um, have recently moved into a new apartment. They're trying to survive together after a rough patch um, following a car accident. And Casey's goal is to help Livy um, get through high school so that she can go into college, even if it means she has to sacrifice her time and her, I guess, future um, to work to, just to save up to put Livy into college. They move into the apartment and next door to them is Trent and and they sort of bond um, over their interests and, you know, all that romance yada 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 stuff. I actually have written a whole review about the first book on my blog, so I'll leave a link to it down below, but I just briefly wanted to sort of pinpoint the things that I really liked about it. So, like every other new adult novel, there is romance, there is lust, you know, the sexual tension in it, but my favourite bits was the development of family and friend relationships and how positive relationships can influence your life and sort of direct you into the right way because Casey isn't in the right sort of headspace. Um, she's suffering from post-traumatic -tra stress disorder, I'm pretty sure, P PTSD. I think that's what it is. Um, but she sort of learns to adapt to this new life and that there are people who are out there um, and are willing to sort of go through everything with her and love her and nurture her. That's just something I really liked about um, this book in particular. Out of the four books, this is probably the number one book to read, um, despite the fact that it is number one, but also because it um, introduces all the characters that will later on crop up throughout the entire series. And I gave this a four and a half out of five. One Tiny Lie is probably my least favourite book in the series. It centres around Livy, so Casey's sister, and this time she's got to college, she meets these two boys named Ashton and Conrad, and like every other college um, story, I guess, problems seem to um, arise because of these two boys and her feelings towards them and how she doesn't know how to balance it. My number one problem with this would probably have to be the fact that Livy was portrayed as abnormal for being who she was at first. She just didn't have a very big social life and her sisters and like her sister and her psychiatrist would always push her and be like, you should try to do new things, you should try drinking, you should try partying. Um, and I didn't really like that because I felt like it stereotyped the life of a college person, but it also made me feel like staying at home and reading or staying home and watching a movie and not partying and not meeting boys and not hooking up was the like um was not a normal thing to do and it really became an issue for me when I was reading it because once Livy did start doing those things people thought she was normal and I didn't go through my entire college or university life like that so that was my problem with it um otherwise I guess the relationship developments were very um, expected, there wasn't any big surprises. It was an easy read, you just flow through it but it wasn't anything memorable and I did have major issues with it so I only gave it a 3 out of 5. When I read 4 to Seconds to Lose it became 
um, a conflict for me <laughs> in choosing which one I liked better between 4 Seconds to Lose and 10 Tiny Frets um, because 4 Seconds to Lose was actually amazing. It, it revolves around the owner of the strip club that Storm works for and his name is Kane and um, this girl who goes to work for him by the name of Charlie and he she reminds him of one of his old lovers and through all this sexual tension and um, I guess them learning about each other, they discover that they feel a bit more for each other than what is um, expected and it's a problem for them because neither of them want to commit to a relationship, neither of them want to feel this way and they sort of work through it and you get a lot of character revelation about Kane and his past and how he came to develop the strip club and also Charlie and where she came from and how she ended up um, in this oh, like this business I guess. And Kane is an anti-hero because he works as, essentially he has an occupation where um, everybody looks down upon in society and they'll judge him for it, but he is the total opposite of that. He really respects his strippers. He makes sure that they go through all the right to work ethics and that he protects them from customers who um, have other intentions in mind. And you just see that he's a very sweet guy in the end. And this book gets a lot darker and grittier. Um, it also has a lot more sexual tension in it. I think that even though it was concentrated a lot on the romance, it also showed, um, I guess, the impact one person can have on another and how far people can go just to... I guess help the people that they love and it was a really really nice read. I gave this one a four and a half out of five. And lastly we have Five Ways to Four which is the last book um, in the series and it is about Ben the bouncer who used to work for Kane's strip club and a girl named Reese who he meets on a holiday and they end up having a thing and then they both leave and then they end up meeting um, at his workplace because he um, has become a lawyer and, and it was just a stock standard sweet romance. They meet, they have their conflicts, um, but you all, we all know that they feel something for each other. You get to see Ben's, I guess, history, why he ended up at um, Kane's strip club working there um, and him dealing with his inner demons and how Reese helps him. It was a nice read. It didn't leave this, didn't end the series with a bang, but it was... I guess a nice ending because he really wrapped up everything very well and showed that everybody had their happily ever after, you know, all that jazz. Um, so I thought it was a decent read. Um, it was definitely way better than One Tiny Lie. Um, so I gave this a three and a half out of five stars. Overall, I think the series really does offer a lot of depth, a lot of exploration about the really relatable things in life, such as friendship, um, love. Uh, family, you know, family ties, working together to face your, um, I guess, your fears and your problems in life. It says a lot about trust and hope and loyalty and just positive influences and making the best decisions for yourself and for the people around you. It really engrossed me and I was very emotionally attached to it for most of it, uh, which I really liked. It didn't require a lot of thinking power though but it was a very easy read for each book you can just fly through them I read most of them within a day or so within like a few hours I do personally recommend it to you guys if you especially if you love new adult novels but also if you think you need to read something a li little less dense um but is still gripping you know um sometimes when you're reading something you don't know what to read this is definitely a good pick me up it is very much my guilty pleasure I thoroughly enjoyed it. As a series as a whole, I would give it a 4 out of 5. Um, I think it will be one of the only new adult series that I will ever read and will stay with me. Um, but that is 10 Tiny Breaths by Kei Ataka. Uh, if you guys have read it, let me know down below um, which book you liked the best and which characters was your favourite. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!